Uh, I didn't get a chance to make a Caring Bridge entry, so I thought I'd stop by in person. <laughs> try and do this with as few emotional breaks as possible, but she would absolutely love the fact that you're here. She would be overwhelmed. Uh, I need a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, this inconceivable set of circumstances continues and I find myself in another unimaginable moment standing here in awe of what you've done. The people that you've gathered, the love and support that we share, the one you've had at my side for all these years is no longer here. She's been a source of strength and confidence for me. In her physical absence, I call on you like I've never called out. Please give us all the strength, the gratitude, the peace, the humility, and the feeling of love and connection that we feel at this moment. Help it last longer than just today. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah, 15 months ago, we started uttering the same word over and over and over again. Unbelievable. February 10th, I, uh, I got the call while in Mexico. I was expecting the call at 1 p.m., and it came mid-morning. Uh, honestly, I was not completely shocked, um, but it was unbelievable. A healthy, vibrant a loving mother of four, 41 years old, with the breast cancer diagnosis. It's unbelievable. 10 or 12 hours of travel and thinking about a moment like this generated tears for 10 or 12 hours, so much so that on the second leg of my flight from Phoenix to Minneapolis, a flight attendant, the same flight attendant from the first leg, offered me a complimentary upgrade to first class. She said you could probably use the space. 48 hours after finding out about the diagnosis, she had a double mastectomy. Unbelievable. The chemo that, that followed for all those months was unbelievable. We started on a Friday, and they said, don't worry about this. You know, it, it won't really kick in until Monday. Within four hours, she was on the floor of our bathroom, not able to move. Within five hours, she was at the emergency room. They shuttled us to a special room that I never knew existed to keep her quarantined from the general population. She laid her head on my lap for a couple of hours until they called her in, filled her with fluids, and released her after midnight. I thought the drama was over for the night. I went to get the car and picked her up at the door, and there's Angie now standing outside the hospital with her hand up on the wall, the outside wall of the hospital, vomiting once again, and I thought, this is unbelievable. They didn't do just one spot of radiation. They did three because there were so many lymph nodes. She's almost done with the radiation, and as you well know, it's in her brain. Unbelievable. Eleven hours of surgery. We couldn't believe our sight. My sister Beth and his sister Lynn walked in. It was unbelievable. It was the first time I'd ever seen Lynn cry. It was horrible. More unbelievable was 48 hours later when Angie was chowing a cheeseburger watching the Vikings game. They released her that night. Another example of Angie's strength and determination, her faith, and her perseverance. Angie's faith and hope and belief in a miracle throughout was unbelievable. The change in her after full brain radiation was, for me, unbelievable. This is the woman that I had loved, worked with, raised children with. Two weeks ago today, we knew 
when the radiologist at United Hospital said you can go home when they told us we would tell you what the result is and then you can go home. They just sent us home without telling us the result the next day of leptomeningeal disease. Absolutely, positively unbelievable. From that moment until Tuesday when she went to the hospital and we were no longer able to converse again, we tried to answer the question, what do we do now? It's not just a cocktail party conversation. Hey, you got six months. What are you going to do? Gallons of tears down both of our faces trying to answer that question. What do we do? It was unbelievable. Another brain surgery. We could go Tuesday. A third brain surgery Wednesday. A ventilator Wednesday night. No response from my incredibly beautiful wife from Tuesday. Unbelievable. We waited, we hoped. They said we'll get the chemo in Friday. All the hardware, the stuff that they had put in their head, in her head, the latest technology, the best doctors. And I watched them pull spinal fluid out of her head on Thursday afternoon. I knew it worked then. But Friday, the tube is clogged. <laughs> Unbelievable. The neurosurgeon said, this never happens. The oncologist at MOPA in Maplewood says, you know, I, I, we've dealt with leptomeningeal disease before, but it takes at least three months for the disease to progress this far. At least three months. Here's the exact words on the phone. I thought to myself again, unbelievable. After realizing all of the efforts were in vain, we decided to bring her home. Friday night, they moved her down to the oncology floor. And Saturday morning, an unbelievable trip home with John and Jessica in the back of an ambulance with their mother, me behind, and the rest of the family waiting at home to welcome mom home for the last time. Unbelievable.